while back, I, I was, went to Mana Foods and um, pulled in the parking lot, and there was no place to park. <laughs> Surprise, right? <laughs> How many have experienced that, right? So what do you do? You wait. You wait. <laughs> yeah, so I double parked, and I turned off my car, turned, and turned on my radio, and I'm listening to radio, and I'm just kind of bebopping, enjoying the moment, and waiting for my perfect parking place. And it took about 10 minutes, and a family walked by me, and I'm thinking, oh, great, I'm going to be able to park. And they, they walked by me, and they headed over to a car, so I started my car up and pulled a few inches forward, turned my turn signal on to signal that I was going to move into that parking place. And so they backed out and then headed out of the parking lot, and I headed forward. And just as I did that, somebody zoomed in front of me and took my parking place, right? I waited for 10 minutes for that parking place, and I was attached to that parking place. And I'm thinking, oh, this is crazy. How could they do this? How do I deal with somebody who treats me unfairly? So today we're talking about the spiritual art of dealing with challenging people. Anybody have challenging people in their life? Or is it just me? Is it just me at Mana Foods, right? We all have people, it doesn't seem like it. You know, our earth is a mix of terrain, from grassy hills and rivers to volcanoes and deserts. It's filled with so many types of individuals, have you noticed? Well, some people are serene as an ancient forest. Others are about as comfortable as a bed of rocks. So what happens when one of these bed of rocks people comes into our sphere, into our life? It could be a boss, a friend, it could be a spouse or a significant other or even a stranger who steals our parking place at Mana Foods. So how do we stay centered? How do we stay in this place of acceptance? How do we stay in this place of forgiveness? How do we stay in this place of compassion in the midst of the stuff that seems to get in our way? So today we're going to look at some spiritual tools that we can use to break free from the knee-jerk reactions that we have and apply spiritual principles to the troublesome people in our lives. And you might even discover a pattern in yourself where you might sometimes be one of those troublesome people. Can you imagine? No, of course. (laughs) So, the truth of it is, if we can't learn spiritual principles that help us to live our lives better, then this practice, that this being here at, at Unity on Maui is just a hobby. Right? It's just something that we practice once in a while. It's kind of fun. It's a a nice bunch of people. But do we really ever, do we really practice what we talk about here on Sunday morning? And and, and the truth is, why would we continue to live in, in ways that cause us anxiety when we know the truth? Why wouldn't we apply these principles to our life? So today we're going to look at how can, we, how can we transform ourselves to see these potentially dicey situations in another way, um, in a way that we can be more peaceful, more loving, more compassionate, and more present. So the, the first thing that we can do to deal with challenging people is to remember that they are our teachers. 
So take a breath on that. The, the people that challenge you, the people that challenge me, are our teachers. Isn't that great? Don't you just love that part? Not so much. No, nobody's smiling. Nobody's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Well, you know, in Buddhism, they call these people troublesome Buddhas, right? Now, typically, in, 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 you know, this might be kind of a complicated thing to wrap our heads around, right? Because we think of a Buddha as a teacher, Right? Somebody who has come to enlighten us, to give us beautiful words, and to tell us how amazing we are, right? And to, to teach us in a gentle way. But when we talk about, come on in, folks. Welcome. There's seats right here. There's a couple right there. Just make yourself comfortable. Thank you for joining us. These are the $5 seats over here and the $7 seats over here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, so that when we talk about the troublesome Buddhas in our life, we're not talking about the Buddha, right? Who was this enlightened being who had so much to teach us. We're talking about these Buddhas as the person at um, Mana Foods, who took my parking place, right? That I had my mind set on. When that person pulled in there, that person is a troublesome Buddha for me. It's a troublesome person that has a lesson for me to learn. And he, he's right. He, he's totally unconscious to it. He's just doing what he does. He just showed up at Mana Foods just like I did, saw a parking place, didn't realize, I don't think, that I had been waiting for it for 10 minutes. And he just pulled in and, and whoo, all happy about it. <laughs> but I wasn't so much. So, but if we can change our thinking to realize that the troubling people in our lives are teachers for us, if we can change our perspective and the way we see the situation so that we can discover what it is that we can learn about that situation. Um, you know, we may go through our lives, most of us, Calm and serene, and everything is great until somebody pulls into our parking place or somebody takes our cup that we put our coffee in. I've seen it happen here on Sunday morning. Somebody takes somebody's cup and you see somebody going, oh, that's my cup, right? That's, that's my cup that they're using. And, and then all of a sudden, that person becomes a troublesome Buddha for us because we get to look at what... What does that bring up for me? What can I learn about that experience? So the, the key really is to have compassion. The, the next step is to have compassion for those people. You know, the, the Dalai Lama said, even if you want to be selfish, you should look at being intellectually selfish. Right? And to me, that means to engage my intellect so that I can be compassionate no matter what is happening and feel compassion for that person. You know, maybe even celebrate that person. If you want to take it to the next level, can we get to a place where we can celebrate the fact that that person got a parking place? Nobody wants to feel compassion. But see, this, this is the spiritual journey, is to be able to reframe a situation in a way that we find compassion for that person and celebrate the fact that they got the parking place. Who else are we being compassionate for if we don't get angry? Ourselves. We are being compassionate to ourselves when we can be compassionate to somebody else that, who, that we imagine has harmed us, right? Because we know that one of the causes of illness is or dis-ease is to be angry, to be frustrated, to be mad. 
When we do that, we are really harming ourselves. So the lesson is really to be compassionate to ourselves. To take a breath and go, oh. To really step it up and say, you know, I'm really happy for that person that got a parking place. And oftentimes, oftentimes when this happens to us, we're the wrong person in the wrong place, right? That person just pulled into Mono Foods, took that parking place, had no idea what I was up to, right? I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, how about that? Unless, unless what? Unless I take it personally. If I take what that person did personally and I'm angry about it, guess who's in the story now? Right? So I, if I get angry, if I take it personally, I'm the right person in the right place at the right time. Right? Because I have something to learn from that situation. Now, In a spiritual sense, I believe that we are always the right person in the right place at the right time. Always. Because if we're doing our spiritual work, if we're conscious, if we are available right now to what is, we realize this is the right place. For you to be here this morning, you're the right person in the right place at the right time to be here right now. And I I think even to hear this message on some level, we are always the right person in the right place at the right time. Because as individuals who are working on their consciousness, we realize that every situation offers us the opportunity to what? To be present, to love, to pay attention and to respond with compassion and love for ourselves. The second thing that we can do to deal with challenging people is to respond with compassion. Breathe into that. Just feel that. That's really our work. That's really our spiritual Challenge or opportunity is to be compassionate wherever we are, to love ourselves, to love others. Whatever appearance is going on, whatever situation is going on. uh, There's a Buddhist teacher who said, feel sad, without being sad. Can you see the difference? To be able to feel sad. When something happens, we can feel that sadness. Right? And as uh, Ricky Byers said earlier, it's important for us to feel our feelings. That's important for us to recognize that human part of us, to really feel, to be present, to feel our feelings. But to do so without being sad. You know, if we are being sad, then we're taking on that feeling and putting it, or we're we're taking that feeling to the next level and letting it totally embrace us. And that's when we become sad. Can we feel angry without? Being angry. It's the same thing. You know, feelings come, feelings go. Have you ever noticed? We have, we are constant, we constantly get a barrage of feelings all the time. It's a lot about how we relate to the world and what we're experiencing. But can we feel anger without being angry? Do, can we feel the anger? Notice it. Well, interesting. I'm, I'm pissed off, right? I'm pissed off. And it's like, whoa, you know, this is a feeling. Five minutes later, I won't be pissed off. The feeling will have gone through me, and I'm not taking on that angry, so I don't have an angry day. 
I don't have to go around and piss everybody else off and tell them how angry I am because I let it go. Our feelings are just about letting them go. They're just feelings. They're just part of the slideshow of life that moves through us. And if we can feel it, it's important to feel it and then say, ah, and let it go and be present. Because when we're angry, when we're sad, we can't really be present to what's happening because we've gone unconscious. We're in a trance. Someone said, um, who can see suffering is not themselves suffering. To be able to see it, to notice it, even in themselves. Wow, I'm feeling pain. I don't have to suffer from that pain. And I, I need to preface all this by saying, this doesn't just happen overnight. This is part of our spiritual practice to work with this, to notice the feelings, to remember that it, they're transient, that they're just passing through us, and to let them go. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, uh, with the Buddhist phrase, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. You know, part of our experience in these human bodies is to sometimes feel pain. It happens to all of us to, to be hurt, to feel pain. But, the, but we make a choice to suffer if we choose to dwell in that pain and allow ourselves to suffer. We can feel angry, but we don't have to be angry. We can feel sad, but we don't have to be Sad. And I've got a powerful statement that I invite you to work with. And again, this isn't going to happen overnight. It might, but it probably won't. Historically, in these teachings, it takes practice, which is why I said early on, you know, it's, to get these, to make these practices work, we have to be dedicated to the journey. And I love this statement because. It's so powerful. I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. You know, there's a, the ego, uh, the false self, the contrived self, often thinks that when I'm angry, I'm powerful. Ever feel that way? It feels like we're powerful. Nobody's going to, I'm not going to take anything from anybody. I'm going to stand up for what I believe and what I want and what I need. And while some of that's important to do that, if we, if we stay in that anger, like I said earlier, we are unconscious. And when we are unconscious, we're not standing in our power. It's a false power. So what I suggest that you do with this statement is, first of all, to remember it, and I did create a walk your talk today so you can take it home with you and remember it. And it's just to take time in your meditation to say this statement a number of times. I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. Remember, we're talking about feeling compassion, about being compassionate to ourselves. When we hold on to anger, we're not being compassionate. And another thing that's, that's really powerful with this is to begin to realize when you get that zing of anger. Somebody says something, somebody does something, somebody takes your parking place, and you get this zingo. Ever had those? Anybody? About three of us. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got electrodes up here, so I'm going to zing you. I get them in your chair. This is what I do to wake people up. <laughs> it's a minister's dream. But... But is to practice that. When something happens and you feel this zingo of anger or sadness, but just go, okay, I feel this. Mm, I feel this. 
but I'm not going to give my power away to it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to let it go. Take a breath. I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. Say that with me. I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. The third thing that we can do um, to um, deal with challenging people is to use the sandwich technique. Do you know what that is? <laughs> okay, well, you're going to know. So there, once upon a time, true story, there was a monk who used to go and visit a prison every week. And he'd go and he'd talk to the prisoners and he would share truth with them. And one day he said, um, anyone can be transformed with compassion. And he said that a few times. And one of the prisoners said, you know, that's not possible. It's not possible to be in a prison and to feel compassion for someone. And the monk said, okay, I got a challenge for you. So is there, is there somebody in this prison that challenges you, that makes life hard for you? And the prisoner said, yeah, the warden. He said, every day I, I got to take the warden coffee. And the warden never pays any attention to me. He totally ignores me and he ignores everybody in this prison. And he's just a mean, angry person. And the monk said, perfect. The next time you take him coffee... You make the best cup of coffee you can make. Make it just like the warden wants it, or, or make it like you'd like it for yourself. That would be really good. And serve it to the warden. So for a week, the prisoner did that. And then the monk came back the next week and said, well, so how was that? And the Prisoner said, oh, it didn't work. It was a total waste of my time. The warden didn't say anything. He just ignored me, and he just was as angry as he always is. So the monk said, okay, next week, this next week, when you take the coffee to the warden, put it on a nice tray with a, a nice cup, a cup that, of coffee that you prepared very carefully for him, and then... Put some biscuits next to it and put them on a beautiful plate and then set that in front of the warden as a beautiful presentation. So the next week, the prisoner tried that. And he took this tray in to the warden and set it down and the warden went, Ugh. and he thought, the prisoner thought, ah, I have a breakthrough. The warden made some kind of a response. So he told the monk this when the monk visited again. And the monk said, okay, now this time, I want you to make a beautiful sandwich. And make it with you know, lots of good ingredients. And take, put it on a beautiful tray along with the warden's cup of coffee. And make a beautiful presentation. And set that down in front of the warden. So he took uh, the tray in, the prisoner did the next week, this beautiful cup of coffee and this beautiful sandwich, and he set them down in front of the warden. And the warden said, thank you. That day changed the warden. His behavior, his attitude, his presence, and he started to treat the prisoners with more respect. So what we can do with challenging people is to embrace them with love, to love them wherever they are, whatever they're doing in, in the difficulty towards us and treat everyone with compassion and fairness. The monk said to the prisoner, see, I challenged you. And I won that challenge. Even the person you called the dog, the warden, was able to change his attitude. So we can affect other people with kindness and compassion. Granted, it takes lots of patience and 
lots of kindness. I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. So the fourth thing that we can do to deal with challenging people is to use the donkey technique. Do you know what the donkey technique is? <laughs> well, you're going to learn. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a donkey. And I think I have another picture of him here. Yeah, there he is. And the donkey was walking happily along through the forest and through the town and minding his own business, but not really paying attention. And I don't know exactly how it happened, but he wasn't paying enough attention that he fell into this well. And fortunately, the well was dry at the bottom and it was soft, so the donkey didn't get hurt, right? Um, but he, and he got down there and he's like, how am I ever going to get out of here? And he looked up and it's like, well, you know, donkeys can't climb. How can I get out? And he realized there was no way. So he started to make noises. What kind of noise does a donkey make? Ee-ah, ee-ah. Can you say that with me? Ee-ah, ee-ah. Come on now. You can do better than that. Ee-ah, ee-ah. Okay. And the farmer heard the noise. So the farmer came and he looked down in the well and he said, Oh my God, the donkey is in the well. And and so, what, well, what can I do? I never liked that donkey anyway. He's always come and eaten from my garden and stolen stuff from my garden. So I'm kind of happy he's in the well. So I think I will throw dirt in the well. So he started shoveling dirt into the well, right? And as the dirt came in, it hit the donkey, and the donkey kind of brushed it off. And he was kind of surprised because he thought for sure that this farmer was going to save him. Right? So he started doing what? Eha! Come on now. Eha! Right? And the farmer's like, oh, well, I guess I, I got to put more dirt in there. So he's shoveling faster. And all of a sudden, it gets quiet. And the farmer's thinking, oh, great. I must have killed the donkey. How great is that? And he's shoveling, 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 and shoveling, and shoveling, shoveling, and shoveling for, for hours. It probably took to fill up that well. And, and as the Dirt would hit the donkey, the donkey would brush it off, stomp the dirt down, and go up a little higher. And with every shovel, he went up a little higher and a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. And, little higher. and soon it got to the point where the donkey could look over the top of the well and he was able to escape. So he jumped out and he bit the farmer on his backside. You know, not because he didn't like the farmer, but it just seemed like the karmic thing to do. You know, one bad turn deserves another. <laughs> so what is the moral of this story? When someone throws dirt at you, when somebody insults you, when somebody hurts you, shake it off. Just let it go. Stomp on the dirt and rise up in your awareness and in your consciousness to remember the truth of who you are. Stomp on it and move to higher ground. So today, in the spiritual art of dealing with challenging people, we talked about Four different things. Anybody remember the first one? Okay, I'll give you a clue. See everyone as troublesome Buddhas, right? Second one was have compassion for them and for yourself. And the next one was make, use the sandwich technique. And the last one, where'd it go? Sandwich technique, and the last one is the donkey technique, which to shake it off, stomp it down, and step up on the road to freedom. So, you, and you might say to me, well, Rev, you know, this, these, sometimes we have to set boundaries with other people when we are dealing with challenging people, and that's absolutely true. However, I didn't have another half hour to talk about that one today, so next week I'm going to talk about 
that in my talk titled, uh, Where to Draw the Line. So, oh, I almost forgot. Um, back to the Mana Foods story. So, I'm sitting in my car, waiting for the parking place, listening to music, enjoying the moment, and the people pull out. The person who stole my parking place pulled in, and when he got out of his car, he walked by me, and he saw me, and he gave me a shaka. And I said, right on. Gave him a shaka back. And he left and went into the store. Because I will not give my power away by holding on to anger. I am a loving, peaceful expression of spirit. How about you? What will you do next time somebody gets your donkey? <laughs> I invite you to close your eyes. And let's take a deep breath, breathing into this moment. Breathing in and breathing out. Acknowledging the love and compassion that you have in this moment. And Connecting with that compassion within yourself. Can you feel it? Even just a little. Imagine that you are connecting with this love, with this peace, with the compassion within yourself. And then imagine that you can amplify the feeling, so much so that this compassion surrounds you, embraces you, embodies you in mind and spirit. Breathing in compassion, breathing out compassion, breathing in, breathing out, and take just a moment to feel this compassion, this love. And to imagine that you can release it into unity on Maui this morning. That you can release it into your family, into your friends. Imagine that you can release it out into the world. That the entire world, the universe, is blessed with compassion. And I invite you to begin to bring your awareness back to this moment. All right, at this time, I invite you to prepare your love offerings and your tithes um, and your donations. Um, I like to think of them as investments. I believe that when we give to places that spiritually feed us, that we are acknowledging 
that the truth is important for us. We're acknowledging that I am a giver and that I'm generous and that I'm prosperous. And we're, um, why don't you hold off on getting the offerings until after we bless the offerings. Hold off just for a second. And um, when, um, when we give, it says something to our consciousness that this is important and so important that I'm investing in that which serves me, teaches me, blesses me. So as you hold your uh, donation, your um, thing wants to either go too fast or too slow, um, uh, your um, investment, your, your donation, let's affirm and pray together our uh, affirmation of prosperity by saying it together. Shall we do that? So together, through a grateful, giving heart, my mind and life overflow with the abundance of God's all-providing, infinite supply. And so it is. Thank you, Eleanor, for collecting our gifts. Thank you to um, Al on the soundboard back there and Emily uh, on our video this morning. Thank you to all of you who uh, help us to uh, create this Sunday service. So, loving spirit, we give thanks for these gifts that have come to us in love. We hold them, we bless them, we give thanks for them, knowing that they're moving through this ministry out into the world. And as such, we behold a world filled with love, with light, with joy, and with peace. And so it is. Namaste. Okay, um, you have the opportunity every Sunday to bring flowers uh, for us to bring back here. This is our, this is our uh, bouquet of flowers that shows up um, intermittently when nobody else has signed up to bring flowers. Um, but you have the opportunity to bring flowers in the future. And if you'd like to do so, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you fill that out with your name and who you'd like to dedicate the flowers to, we will mention it up here. And then, of course, the beauty is that you get to take the flowers home with you. So they bless us on Sunday morning, and they bless your home uh, for the next week. So thank you for that. And let's see. Today, Christine Warner, I just saw her a moment ago. She's running around getting ready. There she is right there, is doing this amazing prayer class. Do you want to say anything about it? Okay. Uh, so she's going to do this prayer class based on a five-step prayer process that is extremely powerful that will shift the way that you pray in, in such a powerful way. And so she's going to begin this class today from 12 until 1.30, and then it will be happening the next three Sundays. Today is the first one. There will be three other ones after this. And uh, your life, your prayer life will be transformed by this class. And so, Christine, thank you for offering this class to us. And um, Christine Warner is a, a praying machine, I'll tell you. And uh, she does it with such heart and such love. You will be transformed. So you can just stick around um, after the service. Um, We'll, we'll eat, those of us who brought something to eat, and then we'll start the class sharply at 12 o'clock. And what's next? Oh, as you know, our, our dear friend Alan Reed passed a little bit ago, and he was oh, 100 years old and a weightlifter most of his life and such an inspiration for all of us and touched so many of our lives. So we're going to have a Celebration of Life for Him on Saturday, November 19th at 2 p.m. And uh, Bonnie, you can, and I will be uh, offering that memorial service. So just plan to see it. I don't know if it's going to be on Facebook, so you might want to come live. And also, we, for the women in our group, we've got a clothing swap 
coming up on November, January. I'm giving away the rest of the year. On November 13th on Sunday, it'll be happening at 1.30 after the prayer class next Sunday. So if you have some things in your closet that you'd like to kind of weed out and bring them here and share them, and then you can pick up some, some things that other people have decided to exchange as well. So that'll happen next Sunday right here at 1.30. And it's $20, by the way, for that. And Course Miracles class continues on Monday from 4 to 5.30. Uh, Linda is doing this class, and I understand it's really excellent. So if you're, our, if you're a follower of the course or interested in knowing what that is, come. It's, uh, you can drop in for that class. And what else? Um, uh, Mike Flinor uh, is contributing to us by offering social activities. Usually there's two a month, but because of other things, there's only one this month, but it is um, a game night or playing celebrity password out on our patio, and that happens on Saturday, November 26th from 3 to 6 p.m. A lot of fun, and uh, you get to pretend like you're a celebrity. Who doesn't want to do that? And let's see, also noon on Thursdays, right here in the sanctuary, we have a meditation from 12 until 12.30. I read the daily word, and then we sit in the silence for 30 minutes. Uh, Great way to connect with your higher self, your spiritual self, in the middle of the week. So that's Thursday from 12 to 12.30. And... uh, As I mentioned earlier, uh, my talk next Sunday is titled, Where to Draw the Line. You know, how do we we determine where and how we set boundaries in our lives? Because sometimes we face challenging people, and we have to find loving, compassionate ways to set boundaries so that we are able to stand in our power, and we don't let people metaphorically walk over us. So I'm looking forward to this talk. I hope you'll join us next week, next Sunday, uh, November 13th, right here at 10 o'clock. And I think there's just one more thing. And that is, if you enjoyed my talk today, uh, on the back table, uh, on a yellow piece of paper, is what I call my walk your talk. And it's kind of a summary of everything I talked about today. And um, if you're wondering tomorrow, what did that guy talk about? Well, you can take this home with you and remind yourself. And lastly, why don't we all stand and we'll um, pray the prayer for protection together. And then we'll join hands and sing the peace song. So thank you for being here today. God bless you. And uh, here we go. Let's say the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is. God bless you, friends. God bless you watching on Facebook. Great to have you here. Aloha and mahalo. Where I live. There are rain.